Hi folks, Matthew Lanigan here with Baywa RE. We're just going to give it another minute or two uh, to let people sign in and we'll start uh, here very shortly. Thanks so much. Hi folks, Matthew Lanigan here again with Baywa RE. Um, I'm the Chief Commercial Officer here at Baywa, uh, taking care of uh, sales and marketing. A uh, couple of housekeeping notes before we get going here with our good friends from Rooftech. This will be recorded. Uh, if you haven't signed up to our YouTube channel already, we would love for you to do so. You can find this webinar on there as well as all past webinars. This will also come out in our next newsletter as well. Uh, we will be taking questions, so please uh, put your questions uh, into the bottom right corner. We'll do our best to answer those as we go. Uh, continuing education is a huge part of the culture here at Baywa, so we're, we're happy that you're attending and joining us in that. And if I could just have somebody uh, test the chat box real quick. We just want to make sure that it's working. So if somebody can just say hello, that would be fantastic. Great. Okay. Without further ado, we'd like to introduce uh, Guy Wellman with Rooftech, uh, Midwest and Canada Sales Manager. We have a fantastic relationship with Rooftech. We've been dealing with them for some eight years now. Uh, just amazing support from these folks. So without further ado, Guy. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, everybody can hear me, I hope so. Show my screen. We and maybe, so, yeah, okay. And then maybe somebody can confirm that you see my screen as well. We can, all the way from Indiana. All the way from beautiful Indiana, nice. All right. Um, yeah, well, so I'm just going to go through just a typical presentation, just a little bit about Rooftech, uh, uh, history of our company and some of our products. And believe me, you can stop me at any time. If you have questions, uh, you can put them in the chat and then somebody from Baywa hopefully will bring that to my attention. But uh, I'll just start. And beautiful. There we go. Hold on. All right. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of people don't know that uh, Rooftech is a, a much older company. Uh, we have a parent company. We're a Japanese company. Uh, Yana Geekin is our parent company. Started in 1968 as roofers and slowly transitioned into roofing manufacturers and really manufacturing anything to deal with attachments on the roof. In the early 90s, started doing solar. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but like in the early 90s, uh, Japan obtained their millionth uh, solar install. This is something that California just obtained, you know, a handful of years ago. But uh, at the time and still we were about 70% of the market share. So anybody doing solar, it was uh, 
pretty close that you were going to be using uh, a Yanni Geekin product. So just with a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about, it's our testing is really what has bar none uh, kind of put us above and beyond a lot of the different racking companies out there. You'll see uh, in slides to come, you know, we have uh, the testing starts with us. You know, really, we're doing our own in-house and outside testing from our testing facilities in Japan, uh, even in the United States, in North America, Canada, Mexico. But then that is before we take it to a third party to get any of our certifications. So just starting off, yeah, like our, uh, a lot of our testing start with Yana Geekin and then is sent out to like SML, uh, UL, any of the testing that uh, you see, uh, any of the accreditations, any of the certifications that we have obtained, it started with us at first. And then so we know going into it, you know, roughly what uh, we're capable of. And, and then we continue with the third party testing. So we try to go above and beyond those testing. So you know with a japanese company like ours we try to do you know uh failing uh on you know uh the side of cautiousness i guess you know um making sure that our products are up to par before they're even going out you'll never see a product being released by roof tech and then being recalled because of anything failing or any kind of damage or not living up to par There we go. So these are some of the testings, like the in-house testing that I'm talking about, load testing, uh, blower testing for the hurricane, um, uh, weather testing, sea salt. And um, along with that, it is also outdoor testing, like this slide on the left here. That is the mountains of Japan. So that's about four or five feet of snow. It's the same array in the inside here, and then the one on the right uh, that is on the coast of Japan. So it's real life snow, real life weather, real life sea salt, uh, sea salt spray, and then we're taking it indoors and then also taking it to the third parties for our testing. Just more of what we've put our product through before we send this off for uh, testing. Uh, this is to pull out values, and I'll get more into this and further down slides. Uh, underwater testing, uh, submerged, fully submerged testing. Uh, this is something that, uh, you know, everybody is required to do uh but we have gone above and beyond you know days of our product or weeks being underwater we actually had a um uh, you know maybe about a year or two ago there was our product was installed on relatively flat roof it was a new roof but it was pitched wrong uh the, the, their drainage was not set properly and over the course of a year, you know, they went back up there, uh, come to find out that our product had been underwater for an entire year without leaking. Uh, there was some roof damage, of course, but it was outside of where our product was actually located. So more on that. So our PE stamp letters, you know, uh, this is a, I don't know if that's in your way like it is mine, but there we go. Uh, our PE stamp letters basically stating, you know, our spans or our span calculations. Um, this is an outdated map. We do have more provinces that have our PE stamp letters, but this is something that is always changing. Um, I know around Edmonton, uh, those codes actually changed this year, which we had to get ahead of, which we did. Uh, but really what we're doing is kind of going where the work is. You know, we're not going to, you know, have a PA stamp letter for a place that uh, really doesn't have any solar being installed. So if you are worried, I mean, you can get onto our web page and pull up, uh, you know, all the locations of our stamp letters and where they're at. If your location or where you plan on doing work is not there, please reach out to me and we'll get that. It's something that doesn't take very long for us to get. It just, you know, unfortunately costs money but uh we are really going where the work's at so we started in the east coast and kind of moved west 
And over the years, we have just gotten more provinces. We've had, we have more work all over. So if for whatever reason, like I said, if it's not on our webpage, just let me know and we'll make sure that we get that taken care of for you. So this is uh, our screw on the left. Uh, it's just a traditional wood screw. Well, I guess not a traditional wood screw. It's uh, it is special, but uh, it, the looks the looks is basically what a wood screw would be. And on the right is a traditional lag bolt, which a lot of people are still using with their traditional flashing. And so this is basically stating that uh, you know the national design of specifications are stating that you know one and a half times the diameter of that screw or bolt of what you are putting in, and then you see these red marks along the sides, you cannot hit into those sides. So if it just bumps into the red at any you know just a little bit, it, you're really not having um, the strength or the viability that you guys think you have. So it's just to show you how much easier it is to hit the center of a rafter compared to a pre-drilled lag bolt. And these are some of the issues that you'd run into, like this uh, picture on the right here or on the left. Uh, that is, uh, you know, it does feel like you hit the rafter and you've completely missed it. Uh, the picture in the middle, more of a blown out rafter. And then the picture on the bottom is just a not properly uh, pilot hold uh, for your lag bolt. And these are all issues that you'd run into with doing a traditional flashing compared to what ours is, which uh, you know I'll get into. But uh, we just try to make it a lot easier and less, less damaging to your roof compared to the traditional ways. And remember, you know, even if this stuff passed or somebody didn't see this, when the homeowner goes to sell the house, this is something that they're going to have to take care of and fix before moving forward. So this is a, I'm not showing you the whole video. This video is just to show you that we have a lot of different videos and a lot of instructional videos on our webpage to help the continuing education of our product. Anytime we have things change, uh, we put it onto our webpage. Anytime we have videos on how to, we put it onto our webpage. YouTube, we've got those as well. But it's just to show you that if you forgot how to install something or you have questions, you can pull it up. But at the same time, I always just tell people, just call me. Uh, it sometimes is a lot easier than uh, trying to get onto, sorry for the noise, onto um, our webpage or sending me an email. Just call me at any time. So to get into our first product, this is our RT Apex. This is our Rayless product. Um, this is just a slight little video, just kind of showing you, you know, uh, like a brief install. You know, our bases, I don't know uh, what anybody online is aware of, our minis or our Apex, but we basically have two products. We have a product that is this, our Apex, which is our Railless, and then we also have a mini, which is more of the traditional railed install, but it works with anybody's L foot, anybody's rail. So this video is just kind of showing you just a brief way of how the Railless is installed. And I'll kind of forward that as well, but go through some of the ins and outs of this product. So one of the first things that people ask me about when dealing with a Railless or shaking their head at a Railless, either they have tried it, they've tried somebody else's product, um, they're worried about the, you know, it being difficult, it being different. And it is. And one of the biggest things that's going to be different on a railless install compared to a rail is going to be the wire management. The wire management, I think, on, I mean, I am a little biased being with Roof Tech, but it is a lot easier with ours compared to other railless out there. What people are used to doing is wiring everything up to the rail. Uh, everything is ready to go. And basically, you are just coming up and what they call is slapping glass, laying down your modules very quickly. But all the, the wire management is on the rail. With the Apex or with a railless product, everything is wired to the back of the panel. So your inverters are wired to the back of the panels. All the wire management then is conducted on the frame of the panel along with we have wire troughs 
on every one of our clips north and south to help out with that to keep that off the roof and those do have zip tie holes so we try to do i would think more than what a lot of the wire or the railless on the market do today one of the things to keep in mind though and trying to railless um is that we work with microinverters so you're doing a one for one with us or you can actually do a two for one but any of the quads if people are used to using quads it just can't be done really with uh attaching that to the back of a panel there is no good way to do that and then it ends up you know kind of bowing down and it's just not a, a not a good way so Our clips, uh, all of our products do have this leveling right on top. And this is done after all the clamps are attached to the modules. This, it just does a good job of with, I guess, wonky roofs or roofs that are maybe a little unlevel, maybe even an addition that's been put on and there's a seam running right through the roof. Uh, this makes it so once you lay down your modules, you can make the whole array look nice and level and not slanted, not off level, but we just do it a lot easier. Uh, a lot of products too that might carry a railless, uh, they have the same sort of offering, but it's more or less you need to take the clamps apart, do leveling, put the modules back on, and then be able to you know see if it's correct. With ours, you can do it as you're laying each module as you go. With this uh, screen here, I, I just like showing this layout. Um, over here to the right just to show you that these two modules or these two arrays over here these are both done on different pitched roofs they're both on different material as this uh, one is just a standard shingled uh, roof this is a rolled asphalt roof and then also an offset uh, design all done with the same product with our apex uh, comes our apex estimator our estimator is just a, a bomb trainer basically being able to draw out your array on the computer and have it uh, display all the products that's needed for that job this is something that we can go through with you guys and do training but at first like i always tell people we can do these for you until you have somebody that can do this or maybe you have somebody in your crew already that's doing the uh, the designs this is just going to show you you know exactly what part and piece is needed it's also going to shoot out your engineering docs so it's going to show you what your max spans should be uh your arrays uh, when i come out to do jobs with people or do demos and do trainings i always have laminated uh really layouts of these arrays over here to the left which do a good job of showing you what product is needed and where and how we're laying it out, where the rafters are going to be. It just, uh, you know, everybody can visually see what we're doing instead of just, you know, the one guy that's got that design in his head. Guy, we have a quick question here. So similar to this, but it'll show you just what you need, you know, all the products that's needed for that job. Um, and then, you know, depending on how accurate the roof is, I know that I've done it many a times where we assume or we think that rafters are 16 on center, uh, then they end up being 22, they end up being all over the place. Uh, I've been on jobs up in Canada where, you know, it, it went all over. It, it just seemed like they were picking and choosing uh, where to put these rafters and there was no rhyme or reason to it. So some of the advantages, I've gone through some of these, but all of the clamps uh, for our railless can handle a 30 module or 30 millimeter module to a 40. So we've got you covered on any module that you're gonna come across. We used to do a 30 to a 46, but really there was only one manufacturer manufacturing a 46 uh, thick millimeter module and that's been discontinued. So we've got you covered no matter what module you're gonna use, it's always going to be the same clamps. Um, and then the leveling, you know, you've got uh, the the top down leveling, making it very easy. Uh, the uh, one tool, I guess it's hard to say just one tool. This The one tool is for tightening down the modules, tightening the clamps to the base, but um, it's also, uh, 
Oh, maybe I am. Uh, hold on one second here. Can you hear me, guy? So am I muted to everybody? Can anybody hear me? I We can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Just the audio. All right. Well, I'll continue going through. Um, some of the things I didn't go through is that when you are laying the modules down, so let's say you laid your Eve row down, when you go to put in your second row, you are not loosening up these clamps. These clamps stay tight, the, the ones below it. So you're basically rocking it in and you're only tightening the top as you go up. So there's no more leaning over the modules, which is another nice, easy way. Again, like all of our other products, though, we, you know, they handle from a zero to a 45 pitch and saying zero, I guess I have to be a little bit more uh, specific on that, that it's positive drainage. Hmm. Um, I keep moving. So the products that we can install on too, you know, we've got this, uh, we've got 90 pound snow loads, 180 mile an hour wind. So we are good from the, you know, HVAZ hurricane zone of Miami. We went through a hurricane a couple of years back in Nova Scotia, no problems. And then up to the snow loads uh, for Canada. Um, we handle, you know, the temperature wise, uh, then that's just for the flashing. You know, you're looking at negative 43 Celsius to 120 Celsius. So uh, we've got you covered there. You can see though, we do no longer accept skip sheathing, planking, tongue and groove. Uh, it's just, we don't know the year. We don't know, um, I guess, uh, the quality of it. Uh, I mean, people aren't really checking to see if that was already taken. I wouldn't say taking on water, but, uh, are moist, um, you know, staying wet. So we, we just got rid of that altogether. We do not advise putting that or installing on that. Uh, we also do not install on wood shake, clay tile, obviously, and then PVC vinyl is not compatible. But you can see all the different types of roofs that we are compatible with. And this is for our mini as well, you know, from a metal roof, EPDM, TPO, uh, the bitumen, torched on asphalt, rolled asphalt, really there's no end to it, but it's not just because I say that we can be installed on it, it does not mean I would advise installing on it all the time. Um, but, uh, you know, I always tell people, reach out to me if you have a question in regards to, hey, I've got a roof, can it be installed on this type of roof? And I'll, you know, give you a yes or no, uh, you know, just because I am compatible and can install on metal, doesn't mean I won't always push you to like an S5 or somebody else uh, just because it's a better fit. You know, I don't want to just sell one job. I want the job to go well and I want you to be happy. I don't want the homeowner to be unhappy or have any issues. So if there's a better product out there, by all means, I will always tell you guys that, you know, it's not a good fit for this job. And with the Apex 2, uh, we've worked this out with Baywa where we will offer up a free site or a free system. It's basically, you know, I'm not sure you've talked to Will about this and Matt, but uh, in regards to like a buy one, get one type of scenario. And what we'll do is also come out and do the training with your guys on that site. Uh, on a real roof, not like a demo roof, not where everything is perfect, but where you want, run into real life scenarios. So um, what I always tell people that if this is something you're interested in, 
uh, definitely uh, hit up AWA, hit up myself. We'll get this uh, coordinated, get it scheduled. And what I tell people is to try to schedule these jobs back to back and we'll stay there for two trainings. Basically, you know, doing a full on training on the first one, on the second one, letting your guys kind of go and seeing what they retained, but then being there to make sure that there's no problems or issues. So our mini, our mini two, this is what uh, you guys are probably either using, heard about, or looking to switch over to. Uh, this is what has really gained popularity in Canada and really in North America in general. You know, this product is basically just the flashing. And a lot of times people get, they misunderstand when we talk about that this is like a flashless product because you're not used to, uh, you know, the, or you're used to the under the shingle traditional flashing. This is a flash product. It is UL flashing. It's tested. It's approved. It's just flexible flashing. So all of our products, whether it be the mini or the Apex do have this, but this is the product that is working with anybody's L foot, anybody's rail. And really, when I say anybody's L foot, it's just a standard L foot, which I would say most are still carrying, even if they do have an L foot that has a dimple that matches up with a plate, uh, they will carry just a standard L foot as well. And again, a lot of these slides go hand in hand, meaning like with the Apex and also with the Mini. So what this is showing here, this isn't showing that there are two rafters back to back or right next to each other. This is called an offset rafter attachment. So basically with our, um, our bases, whether at Apex or Mini, um, it, it, we're giving you about three inches to hit a rafter. So with a rafter install, it only requires two screws. It's going to require these two center screws and then you're done for a decking install you would do five screws it would be the four or the two on either side and that top one so what i always advise people if you stick in that first screw in the middle thinking you're going to hit a rafter and it does not hit what you're going to do is put in the other four screws for a decking attachment but what you will ultimately end up doing is hitting a rafter on either side since we are giving you about three inches to hit that rafter we just make it a lot easier and these are on our pe stamp letters as well so you basically have options of a rafter only you have a decking only and then you also have an offset option where you're hitting a rafter on the sides and you can do a combination of all of these. So with the mini, I tell people, especially in Canada, there's there a way they can get away with doing some decking only projects. With the railless, the apex, I still advise everybody to hit rafters. It just uh, increases your spans. Uh, you don't need as many clamps, obviously. You can do the same with the minis. It's just easier for people to get away with it on the mini side of it because you're already laying down quite a few feet as it is. One of the biggest things that we've always talked about with our product and starting off with RoofTech about uh, just over five years ago, we all, I would always hear about when are we gonna come out with a fixed L foot or an attached L foot. Um, we're, we're trying to stay away from it as much as possible because what we like with our product is the adjustability. Being able to bring that L foot up and down to meet that rail. You have about two inches of play on the mini itself to be able to slide that L foot back and forth and to also have it on a different orientation, whether on the back side or the front side. Now, this is just going to help out with your roof. When you have attached L feet or a fixed L foot, you know, with a traditional flashing and you're putting it right to the roof. You know, you're relying on one that all the measurements and all the placements for these L feet are exactly perfect. Then you're relying on that rail to be exactly perfect, which is never the case or very, very few are coming very perfect, uh, but bent up rail. So what they're doing is really struggling to pull that rail or push that rail down to the L foot to attach it. And by doing this, you kind of bind that roof up. 
So over the course of just one year, just a standard weather, you know, not even severe weather, just standard weather, you're more likely to have very loose nuts and bolts compared to our system that you're able to easily bring that L foot right to that rail or right down to that rail. Again, just more of the things I have been saying. You know, there's no drilling, there's no pre-drilling, no pre-caulking, no post-caulking. You know, for years we had uh, required three sides of sealant around our bases, whether it be Apex or Mini. And, and we no longer need that. And that just went through because we are constantly testing. I mean, uh, whether or not it's out and it's already approved and we've got the certification or certificates uh, for uh, we're approved to do this or that, we got rid of it because it was no longer needed. Uh, we have it on our install guide as added uh, UV protectant, but you don't need it. It doesn't void the warranty. It's, you know, you, basically you put the two screws down and it's done. We're just, we're really just trying to make this as easy as possible to install. Uh, I always talk about uh, comparing it to the traditional flashing that usually the, the, whatever team is using or installing our product, they have the one guy that installs uh, all the flashing kits. They're really good at finding rafters. They're really good at prying up shingles, but that's just the one guy. Then they've got a guy that's kind of okay at it. And then it goes downhill from there. With our product, it's a way to put, you know, even the guy that's just the carrier, the guy that is sweeping or pushing a broom, a, a way to be able to install on a roof and not mess the roof up. So, and I always tell people too, if there was a mistake, you know, you put a base down where it shouldn't be, I would say burn it, I would leave it uh, because it's still gonna be covered underneath our warranty. And more times than not, it's gonna be under that array. So you're not gonna see it and then you don't have to deal with flashing the pilot holes or the holes created by this. So what I say, when you put down our base, you know, every hole that you put in your roof is warrantied through us. And you know, all of these products have a 25 year warranty. And we've been doing it for over 30 years now. So we have surpassed that warranty and we're comfortable with, you know, making an even longer warranty, but roofs aren't going to last that long. There's really no point. Again, just going through, um, you know, people ask all the time too, about the temperatures that you can hit with our butyl. And we can definitely go colder than what we advertise. Uh, you know, it's basically going down to freezing and then that's it. You know, it's kind of a standard with like sealant. And people ask like, how do you keep it warm? You know, keep it in the truck. You know, the, right now you, the sealant that you guys are using, you guys don't just keep out in snow. You try to keep it warm. You just need to keep it pliable, uh, malleable, so you can actually use it. So uh, a heat gun always works really good. And a test is that if you think it's too cold or even too wet, because it'll do the same thing, that you peel the back of our product, you push it down onto the roof. If it sticks, it's good to go. If it does not stick, then it needs to be heated up or actually needs to be dried out more. So those are the two, well, one of the biggest things is to not trap any kind of moisture even though I have tested and done an install before where I'm basically installing into a bucket of water just to show you how it seals up. But at the same time, you do not want to trap any kind of moisture in between the, the roofing material and our alpha seal or our butyl. And again, th these the, the Mini 2 can be installed. It's basically the, the two products, the Mini and the Apex are I guess one and the same, meaning that they can be installed on the same types of roofs and the same slopes of roofs. So this is basically just stating the same stuff that the other slide did. So this would be our conduit mount. Our conduit mount is our newest product. Um, you know, it's you get into the thing where people know your product and want to know what's new it's hard to change things up if it's not failing you, you know? Uh, and so this was a way for us to come out with a new product. If you see this slide here in the middle, that is our mini. There is a self-tapper groove along the top of it. 
along with even our apex base has a self tapper groove along the side of it and that was there to attach really anything that you'd want to the roof and what we saw a lot of people were using the mini as a conduit mount now the mini is engineered for handling an array uh it's just beefier it uh, you know it can handle a lot more than just thin little conduit so we came out with basically the same sort of product but less expensive so and i know that a lot of people you know you try to do your best to not have any conduit on the roof um i would agree if you can get away with it but sometimes there is no avoiding getting some conduit on the roof because you've got multiple arrays and no access to an attic so um but you can talk to uh baywa they do stock these as well now our alpha seal this is something that uh, i still have a hard time uh talking about because i just call it a butyl you know and uh, we needed to get away from calling it butyl because not all butyl is the same you can go to pretty much any hardware store you know in north america and find rolls of butyl or people have those horror stories of the way solar was installed at the beginning where they were slapping butyl on the bo bottom of L feet and just lag bowling it into the roof. Well, this butyl is special. This is our proprietary butyl. So it is going to be different than any kind of butyl that you run across. You're not gonna be able to get the same style. You're not gonna get the same kind, the same thickness. Uh, and those are all things that play into why we are a watertight seal that and that screw that i talked about and you can kind of see it there a little bit better it is a double helix screw uh double threaded so it's designed not just for ease of use but to pull this butyl or our alpha seal into that cavity or into that void sealing it up at point of contact so you can even back our screws halfway back out and it's still a watertight seal i mean i wouldn't leave them that way but uh, just to we, we would do tests like this in the back to show people that it is sealing at point of contact as soon as it gets in there. So again, this is a 25 year warranty and even some of the tests that we've done, I mean, I've gone back to locations that have arrays that have been installed on roofs for almost 20 years, if not longer, that had our first and second generation products installed on them. Uh, you know, I say we've been in, uh, doing this for over 30 years or 30 plus years in the field. This part has never changed with us. The screw and the butyl combination has been the same since the beginning. It's the what is on top of that that has changed. Um, you know, the product has gotten newer, innovative. Uh, we've taken into account what people didn't or did not like about the product and changed it. But this part has always stayed the same. So I've been on jobs where it has been, you know, almost 20 years or 20 plus years, and this roof is getting re-roofed and they're pulling it off. And we've taken pictures where you can see the product and it is still, I'll come back to that one, hold on, like this. Like where your caulk is gonna be brittle, cracked up, just, you know, I mean, this was just testing that we had done but our butyl stays malleable, it stays rubbery. I mean, these pictures too, um, this last one, hold on. So that's what you'd see on a lot of them, where all the sealant is cracked up, dry, and then underneath the base, it is still rubbery like day one. You know, we've had a lot of people ask us, can we use these bases more than once? Or, you know, um, it is our lifespan on these are twice. So you can use a system or use our bases, install them, and then uh, come along and re-roof and you can reuse these bases. But what you need to do is pull off all of that alpha seal, all of that butyl, which is a big pain in the butt. Um, but it's just, it's, I put it out there that if you guys ever came across it, you guys, you can reuse them. They just need to be completely cleaned. And then you would use a brand new piece of Alpha Seal to put onto the back. What these pictures here are showing is how we do a butyl buildup uh, or kind of uh, on when your base is landing half on a shingle course, half off a shingle course. Now with the apex, you will have to do a lot of this because you're dictated by the width or the length of the module itself. With a railed system, 
you really don't ever come across this. You guys can pick where your rail sits and where your feet sit, and typically they are putting them all right onto a just a flat shingle course. So with the Mini, not a lot of this. With the Apex, you're gonna do quite a bit of this. So again, with, with the water, this is a watertight seal. It's not a water diversion. It's not water shedding, The you know, like a lot of products out there. I mean, what the traditional flashing is doing is water shedding. It is pushing water away from the hole that you have created and really relying on a lot of sealant. So we used to do this in shows, trade shows, uh, just uh, I think we did it last year at ETC uh, with uh, Baywa. Uh, without the fish, but uh, you know, basically getting um, some water uh, and a roofing material and shingles and installing this right into the water. Um, again, this is something that we do not advise doing. Obviously, you don't want to trap any kind of moisture or water in between that, but just to show you how it seals up, meaning, you know, we'll put the screw in, you back it up, and you can see it drip back out. You put it down halfway, seals right up, and then push it down a further all the way, and you are sealed up. So into some of these roofing materials, like I said, so we are, we can be installed on metal, but it's not all metal. You know, a standing seam should not be penetrated. So I always push people S5. Uh, we're really more geared towards what you can see here to the right is like a ribbed roof. And, uh, you know, with the mini, it's not going to be a problem. With our Apex, it could be a problem because I want you to hit rafters or you need to hit rafters to achieve these spans that, you know, so you're using less material to make it, you know, make sense for you guys. And sometimes that rafter is going to be right underneath the larger rib where we cannot be installed. So again, it, it, it depends, you know, uh, it depends on what product you're using what style of roof you're using, uh, where the how the purlins are located, where they're located. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, what ifs. I, I tell people, you know, it's gotta be like the Goldilocks effect. It's gotta be just right for us to be installed on some of these other products that I say I can install on. So I always say, give me a call. We can go through it together. I can make sure that you're making the best decision, you know, and believe me, I, I will point you outside of roof tech just because i'd rather have you have success than just to win a sale so on the metal roofs though it is a little bit different than a shingle roof we ask for pre-tapping or pre-drilling holes uh i use a nail set when i do this and you can go right through the base itself and the butyl itself and the reason why we do this is because it is just a traditional wood screw we we think that there's a possibility and in the testing we saw it happen a couple times where the screw goes through the butyl hits that metal roof starts spinning that butyl out and then goes into the structure it doesn't it spins that butyl out and does not pull it in so pre-tapping holes is a requirement and then also a little triangle of sealant or extra butyl at the top for, you know, I did say, you know, we're not a water diversion, but for a water diversion here, you know, because the, it is a watertight seal and depending on that angle and it being a metal roof, you will have standing water back there. So we just need a way to push that away from there. But that is the only time we're asking for these additional things installing wise. So again, uh, the torch down, uh, rolled asphalt, um, the TPO, but again, TPO and a lot of these membrane roofs will have membrane, then they'll have insulation, then they'll have the structure. We can't, we can't do it because we are going to be a penetrating roof and what you're gonna be doing to that installation or insulation is basically making a little divot or a little canyon everywhere you put our base. So again, you would have sitting water. So we cannot have insulation in between the membrane and the structure, which is, I would say 90% of the, the time, what is out there. I have seen it a handful of times where the insulation is underneath the structure, but very few. So again, when people start asking about this, these are the things that I will ask them to tell me, you know, is there insulation? How thick is it? And then, hey, this is not a good fit for us.
So it's really just going through a lot of these different roofs and styles. So, I mean, I even run across a lot of those uh, fake shingles now, the rubber shingles that look like slate. Um, and we've gotten it approved through a few of the manufacturers where basically we're asking for some pre-drilling just through the slate or right through that rubber and then install and putting a little bit of sealant in there but then installing it just like you normally would but again we're looking to avoid any air voids so it can't have like you know you have these metal shingles that come in big chunks and they're basically hollow back again we have to avoid that because there is an air void in between that metal and the structure underneath So coming to the end here, you know, like I said, uh, you know, with the bomb training or estimating training or estimator training, also we have a max span calculator on our webpage. If you guys are curious about exactly what your max span should be without going through the PE stamped letters, which are sometimes a pain in the butt to read, uh, or, you know, you're up on a roof. Th these are things that you could call me to verify, hey, this is what your max span should be. You know, I can do it for you really quick. I can do trainings on both of those, but you know, until you can do that, uh, you know, I have no problem, you know, doing bombs for you or telling you what your max spans are. Again, um, to offer up with the Apex, we do offer up that buy one get one uh, with free on-site training as well, and that's just with the Apex. The Mini is just it's very easy. Uh, it's something I can show you how to install, you know, over the phone or you know over a Zoom call. It's uh, it goes by pretty quickly. But what we try to be here for you guys is just a, you know, um, if I don't know the answer, I can get you the answer and uh, and getting it to you guys quickly because a lot of times you guys are on roofs. So taking pictures, sending me videos, anything to show me what you're working with on, hey, can this be done this way? Um, you know, how bad did I mess it up by doing it this way? You know, just call me, it, it makes it a lot quicker than just doing a, um, you know, an email. And that is it. Can you hear me, Guy? Oh. Can you hear me, Guy? I can. Sorry. Okay, beautiful. We did have a question, but there's a technical glitch there. Um, we have Paul asking, most module manufacturers install specific sp support of modules with rails. Where can we find the information ensuring the RT's railless system meets module install support requirements? The install manual? Correct. So on the in the back of our or the bottom of our installation guide for our Apex, we have a list of all the modules that we are compatible with. And if for whatever reason, whatever module they're working with is not on there, that's when I get my guy involved, we contact, we do a little bit of testing and we get them approved. So it's it's really like uh, when I show you know, the Apex being installed and they're using splices, I try to explain to people too, that is dictated by the module manufacturers themselves. Some of them do not allow corner clamping or do not in, you know, allow um, splices, but they all are going to accept just standard clamps, which, you know, that's what we are in essence. But if we do not have something already approved, we get it approved. I mean, the list is, it started off a page and now it's pages of it. So, and now I understand what you were talking about that I turned down my volume. Yes, awesome. All right, sorry any, about any that. Any other questions out there folks now that uh, we're back up and running to answer questions? Okay, I don't see any come in, but if you do have questions, you know, please reach out uh, to the Baywa sales team. There's a whole crew of inside salespeople and your outside reps as well be happy to answer any additional questions as well as, as Guy is a tremendous resource. Uh, thank you very much, Guy Rooftech, uh, for being here with us today and, and helping continuing to educate us on products. A uh, couple of uh, things before we walk away here. Uh, please note, if you haven't signed up for our web shop, we'd love to encourage you to do so. 
Uh, all the information, the specs, the install manuals for RoofTech can be found on there. Uh, you can see all your orders, pay bills. It's really a powerful tool that we're trying to drive you all towards. Uh, this was recorded. It'll be on our YouTube channel. It'll also come out on our uh, monthly newsletter. Uh, once again, uh, thank you, Guy. Thank you, everybody, for attending. And, and please take us up on the buy one, get one free Railis, uh solution great opportunity and then you'll be graced with the presence of a guy on the roof as well so it doesn't get much better than that thank you everybody thanks guy thank you guys